John Zener, go ahead and open it up. Uh, hey, John, I'm wondering uh, a kind of a two part question on Mac. Um, what what do you think he's done best this season? And do you think that he kind of wanted to prove people who were maybe skeptical that he could put up these kind of this kind of production wrong? Um, I think what Mac has done best is take control of the offense and lead the offense as a whole. Um, and as far as proving people wrong, I feel like that's something that um, as a team we're all trying to do. Kirk McNair, over to you. Don, when we were talking to Mill earlier, he said that he liked those long touchdowns because then they didn't have to drive all the way down the field. And I wonder, you have to run all the way, and then they get to jog down and for the extra point maybe. Do you think that's fair? Yeah, I definitely think that's fair. Um, big guys keep me out of the trenches, and that's not a place that I'd like to be. Over to Charlie Potter. Hey, John, just want to ask you about Trey Sanders and the job you've seen him uh, do this year, especially in this past game where he saw his most playing time. Um, I think Trey is one of those guys who are just ready, and we know that when his number will be called that he'll be ready to go, and he knows exactly what to do. Dan Ralph, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Dan Ralph, Canadian Press in Toronto. John, I'm wondering, um, given uh, given where you're, you're from, what your thoughts are about a Canadian making uh, making hay in, at Alabama and whether you feel the eyes of a country watching you? I wouldn't say I feel the eyes of the country watching me, but I definitely feel um, prideful about being from Canada and just being a kid from Canada. Um, given the chance to play here at Alabama, I'm extremely grateful for it. And I definitely don't take it for granted. Do you find that you are uh, opening doors for other Canadians? I'm trying to. Um, I just want to show kids that they could really, kids from Canada, that they could really do anything um, they put their mind to, especially when, especially if they want to play football at the highest level. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Rodak, go ahead. Yeah, John, just how have you seen defenses these past couple of weeks defend this offense differently without Jalen in, in the lineup, just from a coverage, a schematic standpoint? I don't think the defenses um, have changed much as far as a schematic um, standpoint, because um, just on offense, we still have too many weapons. We have weapons um, everywhere, and I don't think that with one player um, that they can really change their whole scheme. Danny Austin, over to you. Uh, hi, John. I've covered your brother out here in Calgary for, for a couple of years now. I'm just curious, uh, what, what role has he played sort of in, in your growth and your development? And, and <clears throat> how often are you guys still in touch right now? Um, all of my brothers um, have played an extremely big role um, in my life. They've kind of been like my father figures, my role models, everything like that. And um, we talk almost every day, pretty much every day. Um, we're extremely close. Um, we keep in contact with everything. Over to Marcus Rebello. Thank you. Hey, hey, John. Um, I'm just wondering. There's, there's. It seems to me like there's this sort of breakthrough generation with Canadian football talent, um, with Chase at the professional level, and also Chuba and, and yourself and and a bunch of others. How, are you conscientious conscious of that? And how do you sort of um, how do you feel about sort of being that that breakthrough generation in a sport um, down south in the border? Because obviously we have the Canadian Football League up north, but we haven't sort of seen this sort of wave from a lot of talent down south. Um, personally, I kind of um, just keep my head down and kind of keep working because I feel like there's still a long ways to go um, and as far as uh, personal goals and things like that. So for me, I just keep working and hopefully one day I can look back and see that I made a um, I made an impact in um, kids from Canada and the sport, what it means over there. Up next, Ryan Hennessy. John, how important is it for you, especially with uh, Jalen going down this off week, for you to you know get more reps and to get better? What is coach kind of preaching to you this week to not get complacent with you guys not losing the game yet this year? I think I think it's big for everyone. I think um, as a whole, as a whole unit, um, we need to kind of 
go back to the fundamentals and focus on our craft, especially after losing um, Waddle. You know, a guy like that is pretty much irreplaceable. Um, he's pretty much one of one. Um, so I think it's big for everyone to kind of get back to the basics and hone their craft. And Dan, Ralph, go ahead. I, I just wanted to ask you, um, first of all, um, you have the off week and you gives you more time to look ahead to LSU and what sort of things you see from the uh, from that game and, and what you see with, with the Tigers looking ahead. Um, LSU, they definitely they definitely have a really good defense. They have a really good team, um, good DBs, and um, we're just gonna pretty much approach it like we've approached every game. Um, the most important game is the next one. So right now, that's LSU. Brooks Cabana, go ahead. Hey, John, and you know, just on LSU, uh, I mean, what has been kind of? The, I know this was kind of more your breakout year this year, but like, how has the has how, how have y'all viewed LSU since its championship run and even the struggles they've been going through recently? Um, they're just um, they're just the next team on our schedule right now. So to us, um, in the moment, LSU is the most important team. Um, we play this game, and that's kind of the mindset we have. It's just um, one week at a time and focus on that. Tony Sakalis, you're up. John, statistically speaking, we've seen Mac do a lot better in the pocket. Just have you seen that and how much does it help, you know, with some of those deep balls that he's throwing to you? Um, I don't really I don't really know much about like the statistics of everybody and stuff like that, but it definitely it's definitely helped us a lot. Um, everyone um, doing their job really efficiently, the old line protecting Mac, um, Mac getting the ball out to the playmakers and everything like that. AP Stedham, over to you. Hey, John. Say, so John, you came into Alabama, enrolled early in January. You were the MVP, the 60 hell MVP, the eight-day game. And then as the season progressed, you had a limited role. What were you thinking about your future as you watched those four receivers? And uh, how much did it motivate you to some of the things you needed to do to get on the field? It motivated me a lot. Um, like you said, Alabama is one of those places that you come here if you love competition. And um, as everyone saw last last year, our receiver room was full of competitors. And I think that helped me a lot grow. That helped me grow a lot. Um, it also helped me see like what um, the potential and what I could possibly achieve. So I think um, being in that room and just that whole year of me kind of being behind all of those guys really helped me. And we will finish up with Dan Ralph. John, uh, with Jalen going down, I'm wondering how the receiving cores sort of decided how they would try and, and, and attempt to replace that talent moving forward. Um, yeah, like, you, like I said earlier, Jalen is, he's definitely one of those guys who are definitely irreplaceable. Um, but I think as a receiving core, we just need to all be ourselves. Um, Smitty needs to be Smitty. Um, I just got to try and be my best self and Slade just needs to be his best version of himself. And I think if we all um, do that, that will be fine. Great, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. This wraps up.